Uh, okay, Cher, we're going to be talking a little bit about narcissism and how we are all living in um, the age of the boom of social media where we find there are a lot of people, even youth or maybe some adults as well, who are perhaps oversharing their lives, who are uh, basically using social media for sometimes wrong purposes and uh, becoming very self-indulged. Um, is this something that will affect us in terms of our deen and do you think that this is a problem? Um, look, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Uh, social media is um, it's a powerful, powerful tool. And any tool can be used and misused. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, initially when Facebook arrived in Egypt, for example, Azhar issued a fatwa that Facebook was haram because oh. in that particular year, uh, they had a spike of 300,000 divorces. Now, of course, Azhar University and, and the Mufti's office has a Facebook page. <laughs> and they haven't taken off their fatwa that, you know, Facebook is haram, meaning it's haram if it's used in a sinful way. Mm -hmm. But the thing I think that's important is not to live a fake life. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by fake life? The balance I think that most people lose is, is this really me? Am I just putting the nice face of me? And the Prophet ﷺ warns us about dhul wajhain, a person, he says, before the Day of Judgment, there will be people who will have two faces, where they meet one group of people with that face and they show another face to another group of people. And I firmly believe that that's something that relates to social media. It relates to how we project our images. So all of a sudden there's research now that shows that people who share happy family photos and happy kids photos are really the ones that are having the most difficult home lives okay. with their families and their wives and their children and they try to overcompensate by, by, by doing those kind of things. Okay. So research is really quite rife. Initially, uh, the internet was something that you know you can read in that late 90s, early 2000s about internet addiction. Mm -hmm. And there's people who got into, you know, addicted. You don't hear that, that anymore. People have just gotten accustomed to this new thing that you're, it's like oxygen. Yep. I remember reading in 1994 in uh, one of the science journals that they're setting up a system called oxygen. And basically oh. what it meant was that the intertwining of technology will be like oxygen. You don't know you're breathing and you won't know that you're using it. And that's really where we are today, from your watch to your shoe to the feet steps, you, how you sleep and the rhythms of your heart and all this kind of thing is collected data. All of that builds within us a perception that we're impregnable. I know so much about myself. I know how well I sleep. I know, you know, and I can share this with other people instantaneously. Rumors today spread, not even like wildfire, it's almost instantaneous. You can put something on about someone whether true or not true really makes no difference that decimates their life. Mm -hmm. And those kind of uh, social ills are, are, are really um, becoming a pandemic. It's like everywhere in the world. I think at the time I was about 18, 19 and um, validation from people was such a big thing for, for me at, at that point of my, of my life. Um, I wanted to be as good as the boys because uh, I was pretty much one of the only um, female MCs at the time. So I, I felt like I had so much to prove, um, not just to the boys, but also to my family as well, because I was so into it. Like my parents were not very happy with me doing this. And so I really wanted to prove to them that I was, in, I was doing it seriously and then I could actually do it as a career. And so uh, that was my striving. I, I really wanted to, to be the best that I could be at that point. Um, however, you know, getting mixed up with this whole party lifestyle didn't help. <laughs> I probably would have been better than I, than I actually was, but, you know, um, but that was it. That was really, you know, validation um, and getting respect, earning respect from my peers, from the industry, um, trying to get my parents to really kind of like give me the bless their blessings uh, for me to do this. Uh, and so at a very young age, you know, I was very concerned with, with that. And, and nothing else. And the whole idea of um, pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was, was not there. It was completely not there. And so, um, but you know, the thing is, alhamdulillah, I think at that time we didn't have Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, whatever. So validation, getting validation and uh, respect from, from my peers, my family and things like that was very important to me. Um, alhamdulillah, I'm actually very blessed that we didn't have social media back then. So we didn't have the 
you know, the luxury of actually trying to, to show ourselves to more people and, and getting their validation and just depending on that. Because, you know, I feel that even at that time when, when everything depended on what people said about me, you know, it, it would have, I would have crashed many times because of that. So, you know, alhamdulillah for that blessing. Just one last question. I just want to know, um, because of this social media, a lot of people want validation from other people and not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do we counter this? Look, uh, my father, he, used to, uh, he, he still says to me, you know, sometimes I get, a, and I get a bit down or something, you know, something doesn't go right. Someone said something or, you know, mm -hmm. that upset me. Mm -hmm. And my dad would say, does he pay your rent? And I say, no. He goes, then why are you worried? Like this person, what, you know, who, who are you? Do they pay you anything? Who are they? Why is it? Are they your boss? If it's your boss, yes, you should worry about your job performance. If it's your wife, it's, yeah, it's important to think about it. But if it's random people who you're trying to find validation from, you're looking in the wrong place for it. And the, the stages of, of consolidating that faith begins with knowing who Allah is developing a certainty by answering questions we have doubt about. Okay. We can't leave lingering questions about Allah or the Prophet that are in our heart and not ask them. Allah wants us to ask those questions. Okay. And, and from that certainty, we begin to develop an acceptance. Mm -hmm. When you're certain, you accept. Even if you're not doing, you accept it. I, yeah, I should be doing it. I'm not doing it, but I accept it. And from acceptance, you get to submitting to it. And then you begin to practice mm -hmm. as much of it as you can. Mm -hmm. From that practice, you become more truthful with Allah and being truthful with Allah is the step that's right before sincerity. Okay. And once you become sincere and you maintain that sincerity, you reach that final level of worship, which is mahabba, mm -hmm. love. Mm -hmm. And you become one who's in love with Allah more than in love with what Allah's created. Mm -hmm. And most of us, we have trouble in life because we love what Allah's given us more than the one who's given it to us. We're holding on to the things rather than the bestower of the things. Alhamdulillah, Jazakallah Khair Sheikh. Yeah. I learned so much and so many things that I have to really improve upon when it comes to living in the world that we live in today and striving for Jannah, inshallah. Jazakallah Khair. Thank you. After such a meaningful day, it was time to let loose at the beautiful Lancelin sand dunes. I had my first go at sandboarding and after a few tries, I finally did it. Sliding down the soft white sands was so exhilarating, I can't wait to see what else Perth has to offer. <laughs>